Roswell Flight Test Crew here. Click subscribe now before you forget or change your mind. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AV-1 from Action Drone. We met these guys at AMA Expo earlier this year. West Coast Drones! And they sent us one of their aircraft to check out. Let's find out what's inside the box. Outstanding. So as we start the unboxing, the first thing worth mentioning is the box itself, which is a nice Go Professional Cases case. Look at that. Very nice. In addition to the aircraft and the accessories, we've got some added cavities here. What do you think? I'm guessing a battery goes here. Perfect. I'm guessing a GoPro goes here. Some FPV goggles here. Maybe a car keys and a wallet there. Fantastic. All right, well now let's dig out the aircraft itself. All right. Done, done for us mm -hmm. custom. The main event. The yellow and black Roswell flight test crew scheme here. And I hope this is obvious, it's a folding aircraft so we can unfold it. All carbon fiber, it looks like to me. So there it is in flight configuration. What do you think? That looks great. Looks like they've adopted a popular spider configuration with the arms, which keeps the front props out of the field of view of primary GoPro camera. And this is um, this comes off. This is just a little uh, housing protected from the elements. It's like Velcro. Yeah, industrial strength. It looks like they have. Uh, two landing legs on the rear arms, but the front landing legs are on the main frame itself. And I'm guessing that's so that in the folded configuration, the aircraft still can remain upright, which would not be the case if we had two arms on the front booms. Very ingenious on their part. All right, now one of the features in this aircraft they're most proud of, and justifiably so, is this front-mounted gimbal. Now we've seen front-mounted gimbals before, but what makes this one so special, do you think? Well, I really like the four over dampers that they have incorporated in here, as well as these two metal springs. This should do a great job of stabilizing the video and eliminating jello. I'm really excited to see this in action. This gimbal mount has a, uh, a detent system with some rubber bands that are included in the kit, which hold the camera in, in place. I'm just gonna slide this in here so we can see how it mounts. Here we go. If you're doing this for real, you'd want to make sure that you install the cable before putting the GoPro in place. But uh, you can see that they've done a nice job of locating it so that it's well balanced. And also it looks like the lens is right on the aircraft center line. That's another good point. Now, another thing I couldn't help but notice, particularly being an old school FPV guy, is that this aircraft has got two cameras on it. The GoPro for recording your nice, clean, stabilized HD video. But then you've also got this little board camera up here, which is not stabilized. So when you roll left and roll right, you're gonna get the feed, as a pilot, you're gonna get that feedback. That's really important for actually piloting the aircraft. Uh, trying to pilot through a, sta a gimbal stabilized camera is very difficult. Uh, but they do also have a video switcher on board. So uh, through your FPV setup, you can choose whether you want to look through the stabilized camera or the unstabilized camera. All right, now this comes with a Mini X or Minix X aircraft flight control system. What do we know about this thing? This is a standard full featured flight controller with all the control modes that we've come to expect from modern GPS enabled flight controllers. Now, I, we haven't seen this one in the air yet. I'm really anxious to see how it performs because I've heard good things about it. So let's take a look at some of the other electronics we've got on board here. The front, we have a two axis brushless gimbal controller. Immediately behind that, we have the OSD that comes with the flight controller. On the lower deck, we have a four-in-one ESC, electronic speed controller. On the bottom of the aircraft, we have a 600 milliwatt 5.8 video transmitter. And all the way at the back here, we have an L9R RC receiver. All right, so Tech and Slayman's grousing about it. He said the L9R is not an easy unit to come by. He tried to order one and couldn't even get his hands on it. So what's up with this thing? Yeah, this is a new release by FR Sky. They've taken the X8R, which is the standard receiver they package with the Tyrannus radio, added a bit more range at the cost of the telemetry feature. But with this aircraft, you've got an OSD, so you don't really need that telemetry anyway. Exactly. And speaking of the Tyrannus, this is an ideal segue to the radio which comes with the aircraft, the FR Sky Tyrannus Plus. 
Yeah, this is a great radio. Tyrannus has upgraded a few haptic functions, but it's essentially the same old Tyrannus we know and love. Now, you're a regular Tyrannus user. What do you like about this radio? It's essentially infinitely configurable. There's 16 channels on the transmit side, a whole host of sliders, switches, and knobs, and every one of them is configurable to any function you want. And the, the firmware that runs on it is open source, so there's always new features and new developments that the community is putting out. And it talks to you. Welcome to OpenTX. She sounds kind of sultry. Well. They'll save off. <laughs> she doesn't like you. <laughs> we can walk through what these different switches do. And I notice they've got some of them color coded. Right, that makes it real easy to distinguish one from the other while you're using the transmitter. The yellow switch is a video mode selection between the GoPro and the board camera. The red switch is a failsafe selector. Failsafe on. Failsafe on. And the and the white switch is a mode selection for the flight control modes. GPS mode. Attitude mode. I don't know if I'd want to see her in attitude mode. She seems to have a lot of attitude. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what else we've got in the box here. It looks like we're down to, oh, the lanyard for the radio. Very nice. Um, these are manuals for the various, like the X-Aircraft controller and the FR Sky Radio. And, and what's we, that? We have a box of spare parts here, uh, as well as the elastics for securing the GoPro, the charger for the Tyrannus radio, a USB cord for uh, programming the flight controller, as well as some tools for working on the aircraft. Outstanding. Well, I say let's pack this thing back up and go flying. Let's go flying. All right. Okay, so we're in the field. We're gonna fly the aircraft. A couple things we need to do before we can fly, actually. First is lock the booms forward. Now, that actually required a couple tools. I had to break out the Leatherman and a small Allen wrench to, to tighten that. That would be something to know, just to be sure, because, it, you know, it, it, it came with an Allen wrench, which was great, but I had to have a tool also to hold up the little nut in the back. But, next thing was the camera. Now, that was very, very easy to install. Just uh, put the GoPro in there and uh, attach the wire, and the rubber bands were good to go there. Third was the battery, of course. Um, it has some Velcro below the battery, and it has these little straps here. And these are the little cheap ones you buy in a bulk roll at the hardware store, essentially. I'd recommend maybe upgrading to a better strap, perhaps. But these will be good for a few flights, but you have to replace them after about five or six flights or so. Anyway, um, other than that, it was pretty simple, good to go, and uh, we'll check and see how it flies. Okay, so aircraft performance, you know what, it, it's it's definitely, it's a nice quiet aircraft. It's actually a bit docile, it's a very docile flying aircraft. Um, it's not real responsive, but then again, it's a camera ship, it's supposed to be smooth, and which it is very smooth, they've accomplished that really nicely. A little bit more tuning for my taste, I suppose, to make it a little tighter, but it flies pretty good. In forward flight, the aircraft actually is pretty fast, it, it goes. It takes a little while to get there, it feels like a heavier aircraft just due to the, the tuning on there being so docile and soft, but it, it definitely wants to go. The GPS hole is great. This is just sitting here motionless. It's very nice. Okay, so now we're gonna try out the FPV and see how the gimbal works. It's a good looking OSD and it's got an indicator in here that shows you how the aircraft is oriented even when you're flying through the gimbal. So you've got some indication of what's going on even if you can't see the aircraft's motion directly through the camera. However, you can flip the yellow switch here and that moves you over to the fixed board camera. So then you can see actually what the aircraft is doing. When you pitch forward, the aircraft pitches visibly forward. So this is a more natural way for an old school FPV guy like me to fly. But it's nice you've got both options available to you and you can switch in real time. So if something goes wrong with the GoPro while you're flying through that, you simply flip a switch and you're back in the game with your board camera, which I really like. Now we're gonna work with the gimbal. I'm gonna use this slider on the side of the radio to roll the gimbal up to look up at the sky, which I'm not sure how you could use that. Maybe if you're going under a bridge or something, but then you can also pitch down Four. and get a view of what's directly below the aircraft. One thing I noticed is it's very slow. The video quality is pretty good, and I know from having flown this area before that I'm 
over a thousand feet out, so it's it's not bad at all. The timer is counting off occasionally. You'll hear our sultry Susan, our radio buddy here, uh, give us a time. In the upper left-hand corner of the OSD here, we've got a number of satellites indicated for a GPS lock. And the battery is steady at 15.3 uh, volts, which given we've already been in the air for five minutes, is pretty impressive. Bet this aircraft has got a good long overall flying time. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got this play structure in view. I'm gonna rock back and forth, and for those of you watching at home, you're seeing the two cameras on the same screen so you can judge the effectiveness of the gimbal. I, from the uh, board camera, I can actually see the gimbal right in front of me, and it looks like it's doing an excellent job of maintaining stability. Overall, I have to say, as an FPV ship, I'm impressed. It really has got good range, really pretty good video quality, the one thing I've noticed, and I assume it has to do with the position the antenna is mounted in on the aircraft, is the video gets worse when you turn for home, which is a bit unnerving because you've got great video flying out, and then you turn the aircraft and head for home, and all of a sudden your, uh, your video glitches out. Uh, it, it clears up as you get closer or if you turn away, but that is something to be aware of. You could probably uh, change that yourself by altering where the antenna is mounted on the aircraft, but just something to be aware of. Okay, so one advantage to having this two-axis gimbal mounted on the front of the aircraft is you've got the complete range of motion available to you. With the slider on the side of the radio, you can go from looking straight vertically down to straight vertically up and back again. That's something you can't do with a three-axis gimbal. All right, so that was our look at the AD-1 from Action Drone. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.